Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a way to con convincing civilian traffic without having to make 50 or 60 airports. So in the old days, uh, basically what we would do is if we want to make a bunch of civilian traffic kind of zipping around the area in order to make things that kind of complicated, now by the way we're talking about air traffic, not, not sea traffic here, what we would do is create a bunch of little airports and then we go ahead and create a little ferry mission between them that basically causes them to all zigzag in every direction as you can imagine. While this effective is uh, really, really good, I mean, uh, we've all seen that people try it before and it kind of does its job, I said there must be a Lua way to do it that's probably going to be a little bit smoother and a little bit more chaotic, which is always something that I like. So I sat down and I started playing with a couple different concepts and I came up with a couple neat ways to do it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, try those out today. So first things first, uh, let's go ahead and create some sides here. I'm going to be interested in a civil side. This is going to be my poor civilians who are going to be the ones that are going to be spawning into existence. I'll make them blind, not terribly proficient. And we'll go ahead and act that, and then we'll do a blue four too. Why not? We'll go ahead and say the blue four. We're going to say the neutral. That looks pretty good. And we'll go ahead and double click on civil. So the way we're going to have to do this is we're basically going to generate airplanes just on the edges of the expected theater that we're going to be operating on. Once we've done that, we're simply going to let them go flying across the theater. And then when we detect they've crossed out of the theater we're operating in, we're simply going to remove them from existence and replace them with another airplane that appears in a different location. Now, obviously, the size of your theater is going to dictate some of our numbers here. So keep that in mind. So the first thing I'm going to be interested in doing is kind of picking where the middle of all this action is going to take place. And I can see uh, we have about uh, north 26, easting is about 56. I'm just going to remember that. Let's go ahead and uh, open up our Lua script console. I'm going to go ahead and zoom things in a little bit to make this a little easier. Okay, so the first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to get ourselves some airliners. Now, I like to do random lists of airliners because it just makes things a little bit more exciting. Uh, this works great for ships too, by the way. So let's go ahead and start by creating a list called airliner DBIDs. Then inside this list, let's populate it with some different airliner DBIDs that we can get our hands on here. So I'll go over here, I'll switch over to commercial, and you can see we got a beautiful list of aircraft here that look pretty solid. So if I want an Airbus A310, a 2427 looks pretty good. So then I simply go down to the next airplane I'm interested in random. Let's take an Airbus A330. Uh, it's a 2428, looks pretty good, 2428. And I basically go through and populate this entire list with a bunch of database IDs. Um, let me go ahead and do that real fast. All right, that was easy. So now that we have our random, uh, these selected, I picked out random, basically 20 here. That makes it pretty, very simple for us. We can now go into this list and grab each one of these airliners for the purposes of uh, going ahead and generating them. So the first thing we need to do at the start of our scenario is actually generate all these random traffics. And then later on, we'll build our script that'll actually scan the traffic and remove them as needed. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and establish what the center of my theater is. So I'm going to create a local variable. I'm going to call it center long, meaning center longitude. And I'm going to go ahead and find something in the middle that's a nice even number. So we got a uh, 26. Again, we're interested in the longitude here, which is going to be the easting. So that's going to be 5615. We'll just stick with 56. And we'll go ahead and get ourselves a center longitude as, or latitude as well. Let's see here. We're going to be interested in the end value this time. That's going to be a 26.5. Looks about or accurately there. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and randomly start our scenario by generating a bunch of airplanes. I've done this about a billion times. I love doing this. It's so much fun. You can actually make a whole shooting gallery if it's something you want to do. I made a MOBA at one point to just like to test the theory, and it was actually pretty cool. So let's go ahead and get ourselves a really, really basic uh, loop here. So I'm going to say x equals 1. Uh, we're going to say 20. We're going to say do. We're going to say end. Now this is going to get a little mathematically complicated. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're basically going to take that center, pick a random bearing, and then put an airplane on that bearing at a random distance. Oi. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to say random bearing. I'm going to say equals math.random. I'll say between 0 and 359 degrees. It's a circle. Now I'm going to be interested. I'm just thinking here. I'm using my head here. Hmm. Let's do a random range because we're going to need that as well. Math.random. Uh, let's see here. Probably anywhere between 500 and 300 nautical miles. That seems pretty good. We're going to need to get a random airplane out of my database ID. So I'll call it random DBID. Now this one's a little tricky. We're going to say airliner DBIDs, which is our list we're drawing from. Give me item that is math.random. We need a random item between one and the number of items inside of that list minus one. <laughs> this should go ahead and get us a, a random number, a random dot DBID each time. Hopefully pretty. So the next thing we need to do is we're going to have to generate with the starting position of our particular air, airplane. Remember, this is just establishing the initial traffic. So let's go ahead and say a local start long longitude. Uh, we're going to use our world uh, get point from bearing. Ugh, camel case, gross. Latitude is going to be pretty easy. We're going to be interested in our center latitude. Our longitude is going to be our center longitude. 
Uh, let's see here. We're going to need distance. It's going to have to be random range, because remember, we created that. And bearing, of course, has to be random bearing. Whoop. Random bearing. I almost had a, uh, a camel case moment for a second there. Dot longitude. Nice. I'm going to pull this over so you can actually see what I'm typing here. Cool. So I'm going to go grab all this. Some of you are saying, why don't you just create the point first and then go ahead and uh, just do it twice instead of having to do it twice. Well, um, too bad. <laughs> all right. We'll go ahead and make sure this is latitude. Okay. So what do we have? We have our random starting position, which is important. And then we also have a random airplane. So now it's just a matter of actually popping it down to the ground. But... If we were to just pop this thing onto the ground now, we'd have a problem in that that initial airplane would just sit there and spin in circles because we didn't tell it to go anywhere. So we're also going to have to give it a waypoint as well. So let's go ahead and use the same technique we just did. So we'll say local, uh, we'll call it a waypoint long equals, uh, we'll use the exact same code. The only difference, however, is I'm going to be interested in changing some of these little details. For one, I'm now interested in my starting latitude, which I got from these two positions, as well as my starting longitude. Now my distance, I'm just gonna make it an arbitrary distance, uh, let's say about 700. And as far as uh, my bearing goes, uh, random bearing is perfectly fine. I can keep that pretty logical. Let's go ahead and copy that code paste. Remember, uh, work smart, not long. Haha, <laughs> latitude. Okay, we'll make sure this is latitude. Let me just do a mental check here. So this is going to get us a starting position. This is going to get us a starting place to go. Okay, so next thing we need to do is decide how many of these random airplanes we're actually going to spawn. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a little, my favorite little thing called the coin. Do math.random uh, between one and two. So we have heads or tails. And we're simply going to say a simple little logical statement here. We'll say uh, if coin equals one, then... We'll come down here and uh, we'll go ahead and create ourselves our airplane. But what I want to do before I do that is I just want to make sure my insanity is not totally insane here. I uh, will DBID, just to test, just to test. We'll say else uh, print no plane got eaten by snakes. All right, that looks pretty good to me. And we'll go ahead and end that. Okay, let's test this. Control A, Control C in case the thing explodes on me. Paste. All right, so um, notice I see nil here, which tells me that when I did this, my DBID was not correct because it was actually random DBID is what I was supposed to do. And that's why I check these things. Run. Yeah. So you can see it generated a bunch of planes and several of them got snakes. I'm very, very sick of these snakes on my planes here. Okay, so now what we have to do is go ahead and create that unit now that we've done all the hard work above already. So let's go ahead and say send edit. We're going to add unit, my favorite command in the universe. We're going to go ahead and say, uh, let's see here, we're going to say type. It's going to be an aeroplane, which is an aircraft. We're going to say name equals a civil airliner. We're going to say that the DBID equals, uh, let's see, a random DBID. This is about to get very, very, very long. Let's see here, um, load out ID equals three, which actually says reserve, but because we're not gonna know the individual loadouts for each of these airplanes, you can do it if you want. It's just gonna be a, quite the pain in the butt. It's not worth it. I'm just gonna say reserve. Heading is going to be the direction that uh, we initially came in at, which is gonna be random bearing. And let's see here, I'm just making some common sense here. We need side is going to be civil, <laughs> not really. Latitude is going to be our start latitude. A lat, rather. Our longitude is going to be our start longitude. Uh, we say airplanes travel about 36,000 feet, so say altitude is going to be 36,000 feet. And now for the most annoying part of them all, we have to give it a course. Oh, I hate this. Course equals, ready for this? Double left bracket, longitude equals waypoint. <laughs> I told you this is going to get crazy. Let's see, latitude is going to be waypoint lats dun dun and let me see here dun dun <laughs> unfortunately you don't get any sounds like that when you make these things just doing a kind of a mental check here control a control c in case i blow everything up run let's see what happens hey, hey look at that so now we have a bunch of airplanes that are going to be inside of our starting region here so this worked exactly the way i hoped it worked man that never happens i swear it just it it, it no that was excellent. So this is actually pretty effective. So um, I'll go ahead and leave that on the screen for anybody who wants to steal it from me. Um, if you need to, I can post this in the comments as well. There we go. So now everybody can steal it. Okay, so this is gonna randomly generate a bunch of airplanes in random directions with random latitudes based on the center point of our scenario. So now what we need to do is we need to copy this code, go up to the event editor. Uh, we're gonna go up to event editor, create ourselves an event, start starting game. It is not repeatable. We're gonna go ahead and edit triggers. We're gonna create a new trigger. 
Uh, let's see here. We're going to make this every so often. So we'll do regular time. We'll do this in uh, probably five minute intervals is pretty good, but I'll do one minute interval. We'll do one minute. That looks good. Actually, wait a minute. We can't do this yet. I'm getting ahead of myself. We'll need that. Actually, we will need that trigger later on, but um, we're going to have to go ahead and get that out when scenario is loaded. There we go. All right. Scenario is loaded. Uh, we don't need any conditions. We can say scenario has started or whatever. I'm just going to say scenario is loaded is fine. We're going to add ourselves an action. Uh, edit actions. We'll create a Lewis script. Create new one. I'll go ahead and dump that right in there. Starting aeroplanes. Nice. So now we got ourselves a bunch of starter airplanes that are going to appear in the beginning. I'm going to go ahead and press OK. Go ahead and close this. One mental check here. Don't forget to add it. That's something I've done a million times. All right. So when the scenario is loaded, it should randomly generate a bunch of airplanes for us. So I'm press the OK button. And now we have our starting game. Make sure it is active. So now we have the hard part. We're going to have to program this now so that as the aircraft move through our region and get to the edge of the region, we go ahead and stop and delete that aircraft and then create a new aircraft somewhere else in the region. So let's go ahead and close this event out real fast. Um, let's see here. What am I going to need? What am I going to need? What am I going to need? I'm probably going to need this. I'm probably going to need this. So what I'm going to do is I'll clean this all out in a minute. All right, let's go ahead and see this. So what we're going to have to do is every few minutes is we're going to have to scan all the civilian airplanes and determine if any of them have gotten outside of our theater, which we'll define as 300 nautical miles away from our center. So let's go ahead and do a 4K comma V in I pairs. Units. Aha, but I haven't got the units yet. <laughs> Something I've done about a thousand times. So we'll say units equals VP and get side. Side equals civil. Now I've already made a big bit of a boo-boo here. Dot units. I'm just I'm using some common sense checks here. Make sure I haven't done anything really ah, I did. This is supposed to be a table. I've done that so many times you don't even want to know. Okay, mental check, mental check. Good. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to iterate through each of our units that are part of this. Remember, this script won't be here when we run it. This is just here so that I don't lose this important value up at the tippy top here. Okay, so first thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to determine how far away the airplane that we're scanning is from the center of our theater. So we'll go ahead and say range from center and go snake case equals tool range. Now the tool range is actually pretty cool. We'll say center lats. Uh, we'll say longitude equals center long. And then we'll compare it to the unit we're interested in, which is v.guid. Whoop, there we go. So this will get us the distance from the center of our theater to the current unit we're scanning out of the unit's list. So, OK, so that's pretty easy. That's pretty easy. Now what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do some logic here. We're going to say if range from center is greater than 300 nautical miles, that's simply, oh, ah, I just did it. There we go. If the range is greater than, I'm just working at the back of my head here. OK, good. So if the range is greater than 300 nautical miles, the first thing we do, delete it. <laughs> Send edit. Uh, delete unit. And we're going to say side equals civil. And we're going to say um, unit name. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, we're busted. We can't do unit name because we need a unique name. Ah, hold on. Uh, equals uh, v dot name. Okay, we're in trouble. We need to fix something here. Go up to civil airliner dot dot math dot random. Uh, we'll do 100 to 999. There we go. Okay, so now I've saved myself because I've randomly adjusted the names of my airplanes so that they're random. We'll do a little hashtag right here. Hey, I like that. Cool. All right, let's go back down. So now we deleted the unit. Now we have to generate a new unit that's 300 nautical miles. Actually, not 300. We should do less than 300. Otherwise, it'll get deleted when we start it again. So let's go ahead and get myself my random bearing. My random. Actually, we don't need random range anymore. We know what it's going to be. So we're going to go ahead and get myself with a random bearing again. So now we're going to have to get ourselves a reverse bearing. You're saying, why do we need the reverse? Because remember, the aircraft is going to spawn here. It needs to not go in this direction. It needs to come towards us across the theater. So I'll say reverse bearing equals uh, random bearing plus 180, half of a circle, modulo 360. That'll get me a nice, pretty reverse bearing there. I was just doing some fancy computer science there. Let's go ahead and get ourselves a random DBID. And let's go ahead and scoop all this stuff right here. And I'm just going to shove it right here. Why not? Why not? Why make more work for myself? Yes, you could put all of this in a nice, neat function. Um, I know people who do those kind of things. I'm not one of those people, but I know I really should be. I'm sorry. <laughs> all right, let's see here. So we generated our random bearing. We generated a reverse bearing. We generated our random DBID. Now things get difficult. So we're not interested in random range. We're interested in a distance of 270 nautical miles. 
Now what we need to do is we need to come down here for our waypoint and set instead of our random bearing, we'll set it to our reverse bearing. Now the reason we're doing the reverse bearing is like I said, let's say we spawn in here facing this direction. We now just need to spawn in here and go this direction. So that's gonna work for us pretty well. Now it's just a matter of adding the unit. So go ahead and just copy all this hard work that it did right here. Again, never reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. I always just keep myself a little inventory of things. And press home, and let's just do a quick little idiot check here. All right, so this is gonna randomly generate it. It's gonna be in the reverse bearing, uh, the reverse start, start long, start long, a bearing is going to be my new one, start is gonna be my center, is my start, start long is gonna be the position, it's gonna be that bearing, it's gonna be distant, ah, we got it. So this is going to be our code for the purposes of you know running this particular scenario. So what I'm actually gonna do is I'm gonna grab a couple of these airplanes just to make sure that it makes sense. I'm gonna move them out of my range here. So that way uh, we'll see if they get themselves deleted and replaced appropriately. Control A, Control C, in case I made a critical mistake here, let's just test it. <laughs> so that was interesting. So um, let's see, two, was that 300 nautical miles? That was 380 nautical miles. Let me move this guy a little bit further out. Go ahead and run it again. Yeah, he got deleted and replaced. Ha <laughs> ha! Excellent. So it uh, generated all of our new airplanes and made them go in the opposite direction. Yes! So I think I made one teeny tiny little mistake there. This is supposed to be reverse bearing. Reverse bearing. Whoopsies. Let's go ahead and grab a couple of these to a test to make sure. See how they're facing the wrong direction? Move him, move him, move him. All right, let's run it one more time. Nice. See how this airplane came into existence facing the correct direction across? Oh my gosh, it works. Yes. That never works the first time. Man, I love that. Ah, that's so cool. All right, so now that we've got all this uh, hard work done, let's go ahead and bring it into our event. So let's go ahead and grab. We need everything from here to here. We also need that DBID. By the way, once this has been declared, it's permanently locked into memory, but we'll lose our center long, we'll lose our center lat. So uh, one thing we need to think about doing is grabbing this with it. Let's go ahead and come down here. Actually, I can make that a local variable. I don't need to waste more memory than I have to. Let's go ahead and come down here. We'll call, actually call this a local. Actually, it's fine. All right, let's scoop all this material. Now we just have to load it up into an event. So go event editor, events. We'll go ahead and create a new one. We'll go and call it um, check for stragglers. <laughs> repeatable, repeatable. Edit triggers, create a new one. We'll say a regular time. We'll check um, every five minutes, I think is gonna be plenty. Check for new civvies. I'm gonna press the OK button, looks good. Go ahead and close that one out. Gonna add that one, check for new civvies, add trigger. We're gonna go ahead and add a condition. We're gonna say scenario has started. Yup, new. Go ahead and throw this one right in here. And we're simply gonna edit actions, create a new action, it's gonna be a Lewis script. And we're gonna poop, pop, poke that on there right there. We need our airline, our DB IDs, otherwise this will get quite broken on us. All right, let's just do a mental check here. Of course, one thing I really like is you can do something like this and you can see everything I've typed here in case you need to. Ooh, dark mode. Just doing a one mental check to make sure I didn't do anything silly here. Okay, that looks pretty good, looks pretty good, looks pretty good. Press the okay button. Man, I love iteration. I don't know where we'd be without it. And I forgot to give it a name. Um, delete the planes that don't belong and add the right ones. How's that for a camel case for you? <laughs> All right, that looks pretty good. Go ahead and throw this one on real quickly. I know I'm making people twitch because of this capital L right here. Press OK, make sure this is repeatable. And now we are good to test. Oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my, oh my. Okay, here comes the moment of truth. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Okay. All right. Oh my gosh, I'm so, so nervous, so nervous. Okay, let's go to my script console. Let's generate some airplanes first, uh, just to kind of get our scenario kicking off. Press the OK button. Looks good, I've got a bunch of random airplanes. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side. We'll switch to Blue Force. I have myself a nice little Tycho right in the middle of everything. Tycho Ponderosa Pine. Go ahead and grab this one right here. I'll go ahead and grab it, turn on its air search radar. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna hit unpause and we should immediately pick up some airplanes. Yep, there's a couple civilian airplanes we've just detected. Now let's watch us, watch us, watch us. See the airplanes? They cross right over my theater, but watch this, watch this, watch this. They're gonna to go to the other side. And then we're gonna get a bunch of other random airplanes coming the other direction. 
That's excellent. So that is a great, great, great strategy if you want to kind of make things a little bit interesting for your scenarios without having to create a bajillion different little things. I'm a little curious as to why the airplanes are kind of facing a little bit too close to each other. I also appreciate the fact that we're able to identify them as being different airplanes. And they also seem to be um, the same kind of airplane. So we definitely have a little bit of a puzzle going on, but I think what is happening is it's being triggered uh, too quickly there. So I'm actually going to go double check my uh, logic real quickly here to see what's going on about this that's causing that because we're clearly generating this properly double check to make sure i'm using a random dbid which i am i'm generating this each and every time that it runs so we'd almost have to run it in a staggered method in order to prevent that from happening all simultaneously but it's very very interesting that it doesn't really have that delay so we need a little bit more entropy on it but um other than that this is actually a fairly decent script for this particular purpose it definitely makes things interesting for the players now some of you are probably saying well wait a minute you know can i set this up instead where the aircraft, you know, kind of come in at angles and kind of cross you, you absolutely positively can do that. As a matter of fact, if we wanted to implement that quickly, all we have to do uh, when we generate our um, destination is we simply can use the center point as opposed to using the, uh, let's make sure start, use my center longitude and my center latitude as my position. So if I do center lat and I do center long and I come down here and I say center lat and I say center long, now I'm actually going to be generating a random position within my theater for them to travel through. So theoretically, this should spend a little less time traveling down the center there. Let's go ahead and close that out. Let's go back to my editor. Remember, this happens in five-minute intervals, which is uh, going to cause a lot of those shenanigans and goings on. Let's go to Actions. Uh, we'll go ahead and Edit. Control-A, Control-V. All right, that's looking pretty good so far. I'm going to press the OK button. I'll go ahead and close that. Let's see what happens this time. Let everybody kind of pass by. They're doing their little conga line thing. I love that, though. That's so cool. Now, look at this. Eh, interesting. So they keep kind of want to come to the middle here. Hmm. Now things start to get a little more interesting. Let me go check a look at what I've done here. It's goofed up. Let's see here. Let's see. Longitude. Ah, that's where it starts. That's what we want. Waypoint long. That's where we want it to go. Uh, bearing is reverse bearing. So if it starts from the center position and goes on a reverse bearing, hmm, we could also create another random bearing off of this one as well. I'm just trying to debate which is going to be the better technique here. Yeah, because the reverse bearing is always going to have us come across the center. So let me try creating another. Let's go over to here. Local, very random bearing. Equals math.random, 0 to 359. We'll go ahead and throw that one on here, too. We'll call this a very random. Very random bearing. We'll call this one very random bearing as well. There we go. Control-A, Control-C in case the whole thing blows up on me. Double-checking to make sure this makes sense. Makes sense. Makes sense. Looks good. Looks good. All right. Speed up time again. Let's see what happens this time. Give us more entropy. Give us more entropy. Aha! Check that out. So now we've got a little bit more entropy. See how the aircraft are coming in at different angles now? There we go. That was the key. All right, folks. Uh, hopefully this uh, video has been helpful as far as uh, kind of coming up with some interesting ways to do this. I'll go ahead and I'll call up that special action up on the screen real fast in case anybody wants to kind of seal my code sort of a thing here. Make this a little tiny bit bigger. Again, the key element was here was uh, basically generating a very, very large little circle and then basically picking points within that very, very large circle so that we could go ahead and seal it. So this is the code right here that I used for the purposes of uh, checking to see whether or not the units had exited the area and respawning them. Go ahead and grab the other list as well. Again, you can use anything that you want with this one. I'll go ahead and grab the code that I used for the starting airplanes. Again, this code is, people have done this a million times, so I don't need to regenerate this code too many times. Obviously, you don't need this bit with the snake being eaten plain, but it's just kind of fun. All right, folks, uh, hopefully that's helpful as far as uh, you know, creating a little bit more chaos in the air. It actually makes more sense for these aircraft to come in like this because generally they fly using the same navigational aids. Enjoy.